Hey, welcome to episode number 31 of the Go To Physio podcast. Today's episode is a special episode where I take you through how to gain the confidence and clarity to do online consultations safely and get even the most skeptical patients progress so that they can truly see the value in your sessions. This is a special episode because of the current situation. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey, welcome to episode number 31 of the Go To Physio podcast. My name is Dave O'Sullivan and thank you as always for joining me. Now, today we've got a very important episode that a lot of therapists have emailed me asking for help. And obviously this week I was supposed to talk about the higher level lower limb progressions from the mentorship, but due to the seriousness of what's been going on with COVID-19, I've felt that it was really important that I get this episode out here today. And that is how to implement a mentorship content for online consults, but obviously for anyone outside of the mentorship, some tips to help you get these up and running straight away. And as I said, I've done an emergency training for my mentorship therapist last week. So last Tuesday, we held an emergency two hour training online. We had the most we've ever had on a meeting. We had nearly uh, 90 people live and we'd, uh, we've over 300 and I think it's 50 therapists on the mentorship now, but we've we had pretty much every one of them um, watch the replay of that training. And what I want to do today, you know, they all ultimately about weeks had start um, on the content out of respect for them. Um, I wanted to um, obviously still provide them with the respect because they pay for the mentorship, they pay for the support. But I feel that this is a very, very important topic. And I think there's a lot of therapists that their livelihoods are at risk, their families um, are at risk and you know uh, I don't want this to sound a scaremongering I want this uh, to to sound sincere and appreciate the the impact that this is going to have but this is the reality of the situation we are going through a recession now and there's a lot of therapists where their practices are vulnerable and again look if you've listened to any other episode you'll know that you know I will say things um, in the, the nicest possible way I'll be as respectful as I can but I think this is a time where we all need to be very, very serious. We need to leave all the crap that, you know, we, we do on social media and all this, you know, all this um, kind of pulling at each other and trying to wind each other up. This is a time for being very, very serious and facing the realities. And I think the therapists that are really reliant on their hands, the therapists that have had, you know, predominantly patients come in and expecting hands-on treatment over a, you know, the last few years. I think these are the ones in particular, obviously, that are, are going to be very vulnerable. And, and this episode, I want to address that. I want to help as many therapists gain the confidence and clarity now to get online, to continue to help your patients. You're going to have to work hard. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. VA. There's going to be a little bit of work in it, especially if you're one of these therapists that's very hands-on dominant in your approach. There's going to be a little bit of work in it, but what I will say to you is don't wait, okay? You need to get this up and running. You need to get going now. You need to take action. And out of the 90-odd therapists that came on to the call live last week, the vast, vast majority of them have started now. They're posting in our group, and to the T, nearly every single one of them have posted first um, consultation. I was nervous. But actually, once I started to relax, I actually started to enjoy it. The patients loved it. They got, got a lot of value from it. Now, there is some patients that are skeptical. And a lot of that is, is how you, you angle these, how you um, essentially market these to your patients. Whether you want to hear this or not, you are going to have to sell these sessions. okay? Because there's a lot of patients out there that think that unless they're getting hands-on treatment from you as a therapist, that not, you are not adding value. Okay. Now, on the other hand, there's a lot of therapists or a lot of patients out there who get a lot of value from you. Okay. But you as a therapist believe that unless you can touch the patient, you can't give value. Okay. So there's two brackets there that we need to talk about today that we have we need to have a very frank, honest discussion about. And, you know, at times like this, this is where really um, a system, a systematic approach is going to stand the, the test of time. Now, I don't say that because obviously we take great pride in our structure from helping someone get from the subjective assessment all the way through to the high level rehab. And you'll know now that, you know, the A pillars that, that we have in the mentorship from the subjective assessment from right through to making sense of the patient's story to then being able to actually communicate that well to the patient 
then obviously from there then designing and having the clarity to design an effective treatment plan for the patient right through then obviously to hands-on treatment if it's appropriate to non-manual therapy step-by-step -step graded pro exposures right through to the high level rehab and to the um and to the strength and conditioning side of it okay so there's the a pillars and in the mentorship what we focus on is building all of those eight pillars up so if you go to the go to physio.com forward slash telehealth t-e-l-e-h-e-a-l-t-h you'll see the pillars there um, that i'm talking about okay and uh, we work really hard in the mentorship to get those pillars up now a lot of therapists that aren't on the mentorship you are still delivering those pillars okay and the big thing that i want to say right off the bat before i get into the tips here is that you are adding a lot of value a lot of therapists think and you know the image that on for slash telehealth is called the hands-on dominant therapist a lot of therapists have a belief that you know it's just your hands that are helping patients whereas actually when the patient comes in and they talk to you and you listen to them the subject of assessment that's added value when you assess the patient and you reassure them in the effective explanation that's added massive value to the patient to begin to relax before you even touched them because again peace of mind putting their mind at rest do not please do not underestimate the value of that to patients the rehab planning the fact that you give a patient clarity in where they need to go to get the result that in itself relaxes you you are going from london to huddersfield you put the postcode in it gives you the route it gives you the estimated time of destination that's very comforting versus not having a road uh, a road map even is is um, what i would call now a real plan that's less clarity but you have some vague idea that's okay but it's not as comforting as having a gps versus someone that has no road map no treatment plan no clear plan in place over the next few sessions okay that's someone who who can get overwhelmed so the fact that you can plan the rehab and you can communicate that to the patient that adds value it relaxes people it reassures them your hands-on treatments obviously can add value you're progressing patients from the bed through a step-by-step -step graded exposure that adds value the higher level coordinated rehab so that they can do things with thoughtless fearless movement that creates value and then the strength and conditioning or the slash resilience pillar that adds massive value as well so out of the eight of those hands-on treatment is only one of those okay it's one eight of your skill set and that's where now the go-to therapist we can transition the mentorship very very quickly in fact we're in week nine of the mentorship we've transitioned completely to a quick start um guide which is available at the go to physio.com for telehealth i've had to take the the assessments um the the best assessments and the most powerful non-manual therapy real and put it together to help the go-to therapist uh mentorship class how to get all that information of the structure quickly without the hands-on now that took less than a day to, to put together because the 90 percent hands-on treatment okay wasn't uh sorry the the hands-on treatment pillar wasn't 90 percent okay so the mentorship is therapists are standing tall at the moment because they've got that balanced skill set where they're not just relying on the hands they've got the clarity to design a treatment plan and take a patient through a step-by-step -step program okay and that's a massive risk mitigation to your business there's a massive massive opportunity for you now to come outside the other end of this recession if you can withstand the the financial implications the the loss of income the cash flow because i'm not for one second gonna um you know try to to wrap this up with something it's not i'll be 100 percent honest there is all of that is going to happen for a lot of people there's no point me you know sitting here you know trying to tell you that everything's going to be great it's going to be hard work but the one thing i would say is if you want to come outside of this the, the other side of it, a better therapist and you can add massive value and you can minimize the cash flow of the patients or man sorry minimize the impact of the cash flow of, of a lack of patients there is something you can do about it so you can sit there and you can listen to the news all day you can turn the news off and you can sort this stuff out very very quickly and that's what i'm going to talk about today's episode Hey, I hope you're enjoying today's show. For more clinical content and tips to help you implement this content in the real world, please visit thegotophysio.com for more information, including my six-step patient adherence checklist, which you can download for free. And also there's more blog content that helps you implement this stuff in the real world. You'll also find links to my YouTube show, The Go To Physio Show, as well as lots of more information to help you become the go-to therapist, helping real patients get real results in the real world. 
this is very serious and again you know there's times when i'll have a crack and I'll, I'll joke and stuff like that this isn't one of them okay this is the time where i've been in my mentorship group saying to people being very very harsh and honest saying it does not matter a shit what payment processor you have what um platform what software you're going to use that does not matter one bit what matters most now is you take action you give yourself one hour to get that sorted you pick something you get this going and you start from there and you continue to progress okay we've got a limited number of therapists who aren't in the mentorship that i'm allowing into the telehealth edition okay because it's this is so serious i'm allowing therapists who aren't in the mentorship to come into this for 30 days access to this course because it is that important at the moment okay and i've said the same thing to them do not waste your time getting overwhelmed with tech pick something quickly pick a paypal link get that link pick zoom pick skype whatever okay until the csp come up with exact clear guidelines that you cannot use these things then we will pivot, okay? Now, this isn't legal advice, which is my first tip on um, today, so you take that with a pinch of salt, but I'm giving you my opinion on this situation. As far as I can see, I've researched this heavily. There is nothing there contraindicating um, Zoom at the moment, okay? So, um, now I may be wrong, and once I update my beliefs with that, I will do everything I can. Obviously, we still have to protect patient data, um, we we still have to be um, very respectful of that. We have to get the permission, and there's ways that we can do that very very quickly, which I'm teaching people inside my mentorship, and I'm pe teaching people on the the telehealth mentorship edition. Okay, so that's the first tip. Do not let yourself, and you are going to do this. Okay, do not let yourself get overwhelmed and stagnate because of tech. Go right. I'm giving myself 30 minutes. I'm picking one thing. I'm signing up to that for free. I'm picking it. I'm signing up to PayPal, Stripe, whatever you're using, anything at all that you use, and pick one and just get going. Okay, you're, you're going to pay two and a half percent fees. Who cares? Okay, it's much, much better for you now to have a consistent flow of cash flow coming in for your family or for your business to pay your employees, whatever it is. Okay, than worrying about, oh my God, am I going to pay 2.5 or 2.75 percent? Who cares? Okay, this is the time where now you need someone to say it to you, just like your patients need you to be a leader with them just get this going okay because you do not know how long we are going to be in this situation for okay and again I'm, this is not fair monger and i could not give a shit if someone emails me saying oh this podcast you're fair monger okay i'm giving you my honest opinion here today and i'm telling you straight forget the fees forget the um, which platform just pick one and start okay because it's like everything you'll do one you'll get better you get your confidence if you're ethical you're not trying to miss sell someone anything you're not trying to to you know sell patient information over the internet okay tick every box be ethical you'll be absolutely fine okay but don't let the scaremongering uh, or this thing about you know scaremongering and stuff like that this is honest truth okay the csp will release guidelines i presume the minute they release guidelines i will absolutely adhere to them with telehealth but as far as i'm concerned i've done my due diligence i've researched it we're going with something when they update that i will absolutely 100 percent comply with that also okay but i'm taking every due diligence to protect my patient's data to get consent off them okay to be very respectful in the sessions okay if i am recording the sessions make sure that they know okay um that the recording is 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 on etc do all of that which i'll i'll go through in a bit more of a formal order in a second i kind of went on a rant there i apologize okay um but that's the key key takeaway now okay i'd actually rather you actually stop this podcast right now okay at this moment i, I don't know how long we've been recording for and actually just get it set up and then come back and listen to the rest of this podcast it's that important it's more important that you're listening uh, that you get this set up and ready to go than it is listening to me now if you do both at the same time happy days but um but make sure you get off and, and get this done do not spend more than one hour setting up your zoom your skype whatever you're doing and i'll be honest with you i don't even care what it is okay um there's fizzy track there's, there's all sorts but just pick one too many choices can paralyze people okay so just pick one move forward get your your uh, payment integration and just get going okay because again if you as a therapist you're worth 50 quid an hour 50 quid a half an hour okay 100 quid an hour when you're online doing consults okay ethically helping people okay do not spend six hours deciding okay should i go with this one or should i go with this one because it's going to save me half a percent okay 
you're losing six hours of, of potential consultation times there. Okay, get this out of the way, move on. Okay, so I apologize about that. The second thing, obviously my first slide was uh, legal advice. This is not legal advice. Okay, I'm gonna say that again, but I'm just giving you my opinion because this is my podcast. I mean, it's the most respectful way, honest way. Um, I'm doing this podcast to help you, to give you clarity. If it helps a few people, there's always gonna be that skeptical person that's gonna email me saying this, this, and this. I get that, okay? I'll be honest with you, um, that used to bother me a lot at the start. It's water off a duck's back now, okay? Because the amount of people that emailed me and said, thank you so much for your help, that you've helped me massively with this, this, and this. People that then come on to the mentorship and we can help them transform people's lives. It far outweighs the one or two negative people that there always will be in the world, okay? So um, I've got a lot better at that. Um, so for this to help as many people as you can, I will take that one or two every day of the week, okay? And this ties in nicely to this mindset, okay? I think that's what, what um, stimulated me to say that rant there again. But apologies for another rant. Um, that's way too many, but anyways. Um, so mindset, okay? You've got a fixed mindset, a lot of therapists. Now, when I say you've got a fixed mindset, I am basically talking about um, the biggest challenges that my 300 therapists plus had inside the mentorship, okay? The mindset of this isn't gonna work. OK, because a lot of therapists told me that um, and I literally gathered all the information from them about what their biggest challenges were, what they were worried about. And that and from that, I put together this tele telehealth uh, edition. OK, so I know exactly what's going through uh, at least 35 percent of the, the 300 therapists uh, minds now because I asked them because I got that information. And I literally created a course for them to help them with this. Okay, and as I said, I'm leaving a limited number of spots available to people outside the mentorship community until the end of March. Okay, so um, you do have an opportunity for that, but it is limited. And back to the point, the mindset was people won't value these sessions without um, me being able to use my hands. Okay, or the other big one was Terp is not having the confidence to do an assessment and actually get good information from it without being able to use their hands, okay? So again, luckily for us with the objective assessment, 33% um, of our objective assessment, we've got a three layer approach, 33% of that cannot be done with um, without uh, with your hands or without your hands. So 66% of it can be done without the therapist touching the patient. 33% of it is um, we need our hands, but the beauty is, okay, that you can still get a whole lot of information from the 66%. And the 33% the where we use our hands, that's the icing on the cake, and anyway, where we're confirming our hypothesis. So again, you've, if you've listened to me before, you know how our objective assessment works. It's layer upon layer upon layer. We're building a working hypothesis. We're either going to accept it, we're going to reject it. And the last bit of the assessment where you need your hands, that's just the final icing on the cake. But you can still get it other ways, which is exactly what I um, I have picked out, I've plucked, I've um, done extra videos on um, to help therapists gain clarity how to find those ways without your hands, okay? Because the beauty of this is there's times where you will not be able to use your hands with a persistent pain patient, where your hand, hands on treatment is not appropriate. Again, People have, I've talked about this before and I know what you're thinking. Oh yeah, he's, he's just saying that now, um, you know, I bet he uses his hands with, with every patient, okay? This is where the mentorship can stand the test of time here with this, okay? Because we've risk mitigated this system, okay? To help people where hands-on treatment wasn't appropriate, okay? And again, I'll, I'll talk a lot about looking at the body as a whole and know there's skeptics out there. I know there's people that, you know, when they see our stuff, they're, they're negative. And, you know, as I said, I, I get all these, these messages all the time. But this is where this really stands the, the test of time now, where we can actually walk the walk and go, well, you know what? We can't use our hands, but we have got all of this stuff that we can use. And for a lot of therapists um, on the mentorship who's just going through it, they needed that little bit more clarity on how to do that. And that's exactly what I've, I've done with this um, edition of the mentorship. OK, so get that out of your, your heads, please, in the most respectful way. You do not need your hands to give a lot of value to patients and to get meaningful information from your assessments, okay? The next thing I talked about was a massive opportunity, okay? You have a massive, massive opportunity now, okay, to minimize the reactions, okay, that's um, happening as a result of this, okay? Again, whether that's cash flow is your driver, whether that's your employees, whether that's, you know, your business, your clinic, 
you have an opportunity to minimize the reactions. There will be reactions. There is absolutely going to be reactions for every single person on this planet because of what's happened, okay? But you, you have an opportunity to minimize them. But you've not only that, you have an opportunity to come out the other side of this, a more rounded, resilient therapist, and you have an opportunity to grow your business. You can reach more people. You're not just limited to your community, okay? So if you can get good at this, you get the confidence up, the opportunities are everywhere, okay? As I said, another slight risk mitigation for your business. Again, if you're, you know, in the year down the line when we've come through this, there's a snow day, there's, um, you know, uh, you can't get into the clinic, uh, roads are frozen, um, I think snow is probably the best thing. You can pick up where you left off because people are used to it then because it's going to become the norm in the short term. And our patients in the clinic here, a lot of them are accepting already. We've got a very, very good approach um, or reaction to the introduction of this, which I'm going to talk about, okay? Um, another one I covered was don't put yourself under too much pressure, okay? So again, if you're expecting to be able to help someone in one or two sessions and you know, you, you're using a little bit more hands-on maybe than you should, you can still make those progress, but just don't put yourself under too much pressure to do too much in that session. I always say this to the therapists in the mentorship, every single session we're just taking the patient to the next step of low tolerance okay so that's all we're trying to do you're gonna it's gonna maybe a little, be a little bit slower um for some patients okay because you can't touch them but for others you'll still be able to progress them at the exact same time and for the people that maybe it's a little bit slower because we want to do a little bit of hands-on to speed it up it's still not the end of the world we can still influence those tissues without our hands absolutely 100 percent. okay so again that would go back to the the mindset but don't put yourself under too much pressure initially with these but also don't underestimate the value that you're giving people with your words, with your reassurance, and just that support to people, okay? And that's my next slide. You're still adding massive value in time, which is why, again, I'm not talking too much about this today, but for me, you shouldn't be lowering your prices um, for these sessions because that is your time, that is your skill set. You are adding a lot of value. Now, this is a big one. How you market angle this to me is everything, okay? Now, you're gonna have your bunch of physiotherapists out there in, in one corner going, what physio shouldn't be marketing what what are you on about that's deceitful okay marketing happens every single minute of the day in the world okay you're being marketed to whether you like it or not every time you put something out on facebook every time you you put your website live every day that's marketing okay now you can market pretty average which 96 percent of of um of most businesses do which is why they go out of business or you can market like the four percent who manage to stay in business okay and how you market this is everything okay so again for us what i said was we were not closed okay so we not not one point that we say okay and we closed our our, um, our physical premises um yesterday okay but not at one point in that email to our patients that we said we're closed we said we were transitioning 100 percent to online appointments okay so again there's a big difference we see to the mindset of someone you telling someone you're closed versus we're not closed we're just going online okay and again you say that with confidence you'll be surprised now of course not every patient is gonna is gonna go straight away okay that's great Where, where's the link what do i do okay you're gonna have to work on a couple which um we are helping our objections and, and stuff like that inside the, the telehealth um, edition and also obviously with our, our usual mentorship plus big things ring every patient okay and i said this in a post the other day even if you um, aren't doing these yet okay and you're still setting up and you're, you're still getting the confidence to, to do these ring every patient you should be ringing every patient anyway okay if you've closed your clinic for um you know you stop seeing people in person all of a sudden you, you're you're not helping your patients again you know or you're not staying in touch with your patients then i would respectfully say that you don't give a shit about your patients okay and you you know people can can give shit to me for for marketing and, and putting facebook ads up and stuff like that but i can tell you one thing we were still open and we rang um every one of our patients to make sure they're okay any patients that could that couldn't get in we're ringing them we were ringing past patients who hadn't come into the clinic recently just asking them that we know are a little bit older, that we know are a little bit vulnerable. Are you okay? Is there anything you need? Okay, so again, you need to give a shit. Have you passed the give a shit test? Okay, since you closed your, your clinic. Okay, and for a lot of therapists, they've said we're closed and they're so focused and consumed on themselves that they completely forgot about their patients. Well, I appreciate we've all got a lot of serious problems going on. And again, 
I don't want to sound like I'm preaching to you, but the therapist that rings his patients and deepens that relationship with those patients, when we get through this, they're the ones that are going to have the businesses left because they're deepening the relationship with those customers. And they will not forget this on these times of vulnerability when you're there for them and you're there to help them. That's just human nature. Okay. So the one thing I would say is ring every patient, let them know you're transitioning online. Don't send a broadcast email. Half of them don't get open. Half of the people will, uh, will tell, um, the, um, the email provider you're spamming them anyway. Okay. Even though they signed up for the, for the emails, another rant, <laughs> but, um, anyway, so make sure don't email your patients to the broadcast. Let's do a personalized email. If you're going to do it, but ring every single patient, speak to them. Even if you ring your, your current patient list, you're not doing online consults yet, just ring them. Make sure how's things going right. Next week, I'm going to be transitioning. I'm getting a set up. I'm doing some testing. I'm going to get a set up. We're going to do our, our online session next week. I'll give you a ring in a couple of days, see how you're going. How does that sound? Okay. So again, how you position it is, is everything. Okay. There's a couple of things here covering in kind of what we're saying to the patient and um, stuff like that and, and various other bits to market, which again, out of respect for the therapist, I'm not going to cover too much. Um, and then one of the big things that I will say though, is what you're trying to do ultimately. Okay. So again, what, what we do to, to give our patients the best shot of that respectfully for the, for the, for the mentorship therapist, I, I won't go into that today. Um, but what I will say is what you're trying to, your main objective of how you do what you're you're doing is to eliminate the fear of the unknown for the patient. Okay. Cause a lot of patients are going to be skeptical. They're going to be fearful of tech. They're, they're not going to know what these online sessions are. That's going to be the main objection for patients. Okay. And again, they're very, very easy to eliminate if you know how. Okay. Uh, the resources, I'm not even going to talk about them. Um, I mentioned some for the, the telehealth edition and, and the mentorship, but I'll be honest with you, I'm over that now, um, and hopefully you are too. The consent forms, again, I, I've given examples of consent forms and stuff like that inside the telehealth um, edition of the mentorship and, and obviously our own mentorship. Um, and again, just a couple of things with the technology that you do use, I will share this, is Take the fairly unknown away from the patient. So if you do back-to-back -back sessions, the, the worst thing is, now I've been doing uh, Zoom calls with therapists for the last uh, five years, okay? So again, I'm used to this. I've been doing um, online sessions with physios, with players, um, stuff like that. I've done a few uh, patient ones in the past as well. So I'm quite used to being online uh, using these platforms uh, with other therapists, uh, helping them with some of their problems. So the one thing that I would say from that with, the, with these technologies is, is wasting five to ten minutes at the start with the person trying to figure out how to use their camera or how to use their sound okay that's the thing that's going to kill you at these it's not going to be you're not going to be able to cue your exercises well enough as i said once you relax into the session with the patient it's going to be like you're just in the room with them you'll actually really enjoy them okay so make sure that your patient knows how to put the camera on how to turn put the the sound on etc just take away any trip wires that's going to cost you time in the session and again i give examples of that in my um in my actual presentation the delivery is the easy bit from a treatment point of view, mentorship, KPIs are king. So intervene, retest. Okay. So again, get your KPI to start, intervene with an intervention, retest again. Okay. And then at that point, you're either going to progress the patient, you're going to consolidate the progress here, or you're going to regress them. And again, for a lot of that, it's just going to be talking through the, um, the actual, um, the exercise with the patient, cueing them, seeing them, the mistakes that they're making. And I said, you'll, you'll probably see some of those examples on my, my Facebook page and LinkedIn page. Um, I've been sharing some clips of a real life example over the last few days. Okay. Um, then I've talked about some more higher level loading assessments. Okay. So again, in the mentorship, we kind of go step, step by step low tolerance. And the nice thing about this now is, as I said, I'm actually really enjoying teaching this side um, of it for the therapist now where they have to problem solve without their hands. Um, as I said, I, like I would, I would be 100% respectful for the circumstances and, and all the hard times that we're all going to be going through soon. I think, you know, I'm excited at, um, with, with all that being said, I'm excited coming out the other end of this and being a much, much better clinician, being a much, much better teacher of being able to teach all this stuff as well without using our hands. Okay. So again, um, you know, I think a lot of therapists are going to, um, come out of this much, much stronger, well-rounded therapists. Okay. And again, I say that respectfully. Um, and that's where I was showing them how to use some of the higher level rehab exercises, how to use them as assessments. Okay, I've given them some tips on some stuff to use instead of their hands to desensitize uh, a patient's pain experience. 
uh, and then some other tips how to use it as well and then screen share stuff like that would be important um, as well for the patient so again you know if you've got a, a picture that says a thousand words that's what this is isn't it so um, you know if you've got a picture of the position you want to get them into or what we use is we've got an exercise library so I'll, we've got like these 50 60 second clips of all our exercises I'll click quickly share my screen play the clip patient will see the exact movement that the patient's going to do so they've seen it then they'll go into their position against the wall or wherever they're doing it and then i'll fine tune them with the cues so that's 60 seconds or you put a picture on your screen and go right get into that pick that position it saves you trying to describe okay lie on your back move over onto your left do this do that okay so again the picture says a thousand words use that use your screen share effectively as well okay so hopefully you um you found that useful uh some action points i've kind of flicked through the the last bits of the presentation anybody on my mentorship you have access to that in your members area anyone in the telehealth edition of the mentorship who's come on you have access to that as well in your online consults uh, folder as well in the members area so the action um points just to sum up set up your account set up your t's and c's set up your payment processor and just get it done okay prep your indoctrination document to stop any tripwires ring all your patients uh, transition them do your your first few um, sessions grow in confidence keep your sessions simple test um, treat or intervene retest then uh, follow up your patients using the the, the mentorship stuff that we talk about um but obviously that's specific to mentorship get your first session done and then post your um i just had there post them um, in the mentorship group any tips advice for other members and also any trip wires that you did come in against so that you can clean them up again okay so that um is my my top tips for that okay hopefully you found this useful um until the 31st of march we have the telehealth mentorship edition available so as I said, I'm working with a small group of therapists outside of mentorship. We're nine weeks into the mentorship program now, um, but um, I am taking this small group on as well, obviously because of the circumstances. And um, what we're doing is we're taking um, six um, essentially mini modules, okay, which will have the, basically it's, it's really forced me to go, right, if I can take stuff out of the mentorship where people can still get great results, what do I make sure they need to know? okay so what we've done essentially is we've almost taken the 20% the of the mentorship that will give 80% of the results okay obviously without without your hands okay so I've taken that I've structured it into um, six uh, modules about an hour to an hour and a half um, per day the idea is you'll consume it all over seven days or if you want to binge watch you'll, you'll probably do it all in a day and then you you implement straight away okay so you're going to get all my assessments all my treatment progressions that you can definitely be doing um, with online um, consultation. So if you're interested in that, head over to www.thegotophysio.com forward slash um, telehealth. And I'll give you um, all the details there. And as I said, until the 31st of March, we're, we're gonna leave this up. And then um, I said, you know, we'll, we'll support those therapists for, you get 30 days access to all the content. I'll work closely with you for 30 days. Um, but then obviously after 30 days, um, I need to put my focus back on to the um to the mentorship therapists um as again as usual but i'm more than happy to to work intimately closely intensely with uh, with a, a small group for 30 days to get you up with this stuff because again you do not know how long this is is going to take worst case scenario you come out the other end um, a more well-rounded therapist so head over to www.thegotophysio.com forward slash telehealth for more information about that now that's it for this week i want to apologize again for rants and, and stuff like that i think this is a very serious time i think you only appreciate how lucky we are how, how much we take life for granted and i think you know the way the profession has gone with all this pettiness and, and stuff like that that happens online these days between therapists i think there's a massive lack of respect between therapists online um and i think a lot of that stuff um it just shows how trivial it is now where you know we need to be supporting and helping each other um through these tough times and i think the therapist that turns the the news off the therapist that gets his mindset her mindset right protects your mindset if you want to do this you can do this there's absolutely no reason why any therapist cannot do telehealth and cannot have the confidence to to do this well okay it's scary because it's, you're going outside your comfort zone but you do a few you're 
confidence will skyrocket and as i said if you want to work with me if you want me to help you that's absolutely fine head over to the go to physio.com forward slash telehealth if you don't want my help that's absolutely fine too but please 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 take action do not get overwhelmed by spending an hour to more than an hour on what payment process or what uh, platform you're going to use pick one go with it and then you can always refine later because if you've got five or six of these coming in you've got 300 quid coming in the door this week at least that is something okay so again um you'll do that you'll you'll your patients will um will enjoy them you'll add value and you'll get the first few over and you will not look back i promise you that and then once we come outside this it offers a massive opportunity for you also okay because it's just going to be huge in the next few years okay that's it for this week once again look i'm, I'm sorry for uh for the rants i apologize but um i felt that that it needed to be said so any questions any emails even the negative ones uh you can email me at dave at the go to physio.com i'm more than uh, happy to help out if you have any questions or, or anything like that or if you just want to uh to rant at me again that's um absolutely uh, no problem because i said um you probably owe me a few now after mine to you okay so that's it for this week um you know all jokes aside i hope um i hope you're doing well i hope you're safe first of all i hope you're you're safe and healthy i hope your family are safe and healthy obviously look after yourselves um in this time as well look after yourselves mentally we're doing a lot of stuff for our patients with mental health and breathing and all that stuff um as well and you know all jokes aside this is a very serious time but at the same time you need to take action you need to take control of the situation now and uh, get going with this stuff and as i said you can do add a lot of value to patients without your hands okay so, so get that mindset um away and patients will see value in it um as well so, so you know that belief as well um you know quash that and you will be absolutely fine okay if you need any help email me dave at the go to physio.com and uh, we're more than happy to, to give you any advice, any help, any tips, um, you know, that, that we can. Obviously, it's not legal advice, but, uh, but obviously, uh, you probably know that. Okay, that's it for this week. I will uh, see what we do next week, to be honest with you, with the podcast. I might, need, I might do another part of this just to give you any tripwires that therapists are coming up against in my mentorship community and, um, and help you that way as well. Okay, that's it for this week. I will uh, see you next week or you'll hear me next week or I'll hear you, no, you'll hear me uh, next week on the, the next episode. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's show. For more information, please visit www.thegotophysio.com where you can download my six step patient adherence checklist absolutely free as well as read the accompanying blog that goes with today's episode. We've got lots of cheat sheets and clinical content to help you implement to get real world results with real patients that ultimately helps you become the go-to therapist and allows you to build a profitable, busy private practice or become that go-to therapist in professional sport. I'll speak to you soon on the next episode.